What is happiness? I don't need to tell you, you've been experiencing it. Happiness is an inner state of energy. It starts from, yeah, I'm feeling better, to, yes, I'm really happy, to, oh my God, it's blowing me away, to, goodbye, I'm in ecstasy, I'm nirvana. It goes all the way up, that is within the, the scope and the, and the diff different levels of happiness. So what everybody wants is to feel happy, the highest happiness they possibly can. So the question becomes, how do you do that? Well, there's thousands and thousands of techniques and teachers and everything out there. So let's take a look at, because there, a lot of them are off of, after the same thing, how to get that experience inside. So I'll start by asking a question. What makes you happy? In general life, what makes you happy? And the answer is very straightforward, getting what I want. I hope that doesn't sound selfish, it's real. If I get what I want, I'm anywhere from, wow, that's great, to, oh my God, this is the most wonderful thing. What doesn't make you happy? Getting what I don't want. Then you go anywhere from, this is messing me up, I feel uncomfortable, I'm depressed, I, this is unacceptable, I, let's do this one. I can't handle this. You've used the words, everyone uses the words, I can't handle this. So there's your yin and yang. If you get what you want, you're doing well. If you get what you don't want, you're not doing well. In between, if you don't get what you want, you feel disappointed. And if you if you don't have to get what you don't want, you feel relieved. I call that the truth table, the four quadrant truth table about happiness. So let's look at that. If what you're doing to attempt to get happiness is to get what you want, let's talk about that. Is there anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with that. Obviously, if you do get what you want, it's easy to get happy. It's easy to get one stage of happiness or another. How easy it is to get what you want? Well, we call it work. We, the world in front of us has to unfold the way we want. Does it do that all the time? Of course it doesn't. Does it do it most of the time? Of course it doesn't, right? The world goes about its business, the weather changes, people change, business changes, all kinds of things change. And it's only if it actually matches what we decided we wanted that we are feeling a state of happiness. And likewise with things that, that we, we don't want and they make us unhappy, make us sad, make, us, make it feel that we can't handle things, it's not fair, right? We don't have control over the weather. We don't have control over the driver in front of us. We don't have control over many, many things. In fact, almost all the things in our life are the result of cause and effect, they're science-based, and they are not because we want them to be that way or not want them to be that way. So what do we do about that? Well, there's two things you can do. One, you take my statement. If you get what you want, it makes you happy. And will everybody agree with that? <laughs> am, am I talking to the wrong crowd? If you get what you want, it makes you happy. It's a very easy way to get happy, to get what you want. So basically there's two aspects of that. One is what is the outside world doing? And two, how does it match what I want? Most people only pay attention to one aspect, which is I know what I want. Really you don't, but I know what I want and I'm gonna try and get it. I'm gonna work with people. I'm gonna change myself. I'm gonna get degrees. I'm gonna wear certain clothes, drive certain cars, have a certain house. I'm just going to work hard, have a whole lot of money so that I can do what I want. And basically, if I can get that situation outside the way I want, I'm happy. I like to take a moment to analyze the probability of you getting every moment of your life the way you want it to be. I shouldn't have to talk about that. I usually ask people, let's take a real peak experience state where you're really blown away. It's your wedding day, the first kiss, just something really high to where, how do I define that? I wouldn't trade anything for this. This is exactly what I want to experience for the rest of my life. It's perfect, all right? It's a peak experience. How many of you had? In general, if you really be honest, you could count them on one hand, you know, throughout your life how many things really just totally blew you away. And the question becomes, how long did it last? Did you ever reach a state that when you had an experience like that, you didn't need anything else for the rest of your life? When you said to your beloved, you're all I love or need, you're the totality of my dreams, you're my soulmate, how long did that last that you really meant, I don't need anything else? I don't need money, I don't need this, I don't need anything else. It doesn't, it doesn't last. You get used to things. I, I, I went through it 
all but a doc dissertation with a doctor in economics, and they taught me the following. There's a law of diminishing returns. The more you get something, the less it feeds you, the less you want it. That's just not economics, that's life, all right? So to go out there and say, the only way I know to be happy is to get what I want, is really a losing situation. Because one, you're not gonna get every moment of your life in front of you to be the way you want. And second, even if you did, you change what you want, everything changes and it doesn't, it's not as fulfilling. So as a mode to happiness, that's oversold, all right? Getting what you want is very, very overrated. Well, what's the alternative? The alternative is to look at the other side of the equation, which is who decided what you want? You did. How did you come up with a decision of what I want? You get into a relationship, it's working. The person is just the way you want them to be. You're really blown away that they think the way you think, they act the way you want. When you want to be close, they're close. When you want some space, there's some space. It's acting like that, okay? It doesn't stay like that. The person's different, you're different. It keeps changing. So the question becomes, do you go out there and attempt to manipulate the person? My favorite, my favorite quote when you ask somebody, how's your relationship working? You started dating somebody. They say, it's a work in process. <laughs> That's real nice, <laughs> okay? In other words, I'm attempting to manipulate the person to be the way I want them to be, and that's how I'm judging the relationship. So if you work on trying to get the outside the way you want, that's one way to do it. The other way to do it is to question, how did I decide what I want? You were not born with it. It's not in your genes. It's not genetic, okay? Psychology looks at it very straightforward. Skinner says, man is the sum of his learned experiences. It's really not true. You are the consciousness that is aware that your psyche is the sum of your learned experiences. All of you are spiritually oriented, you know about witness consciousness. That part of you, the awareness, is not the sum of your learned experiences, but it is watching the sum of your learned experiences. That's what your psyche is. Your thoughts, your emotions, all that stuff are based upon the experiences you had in your life. You're programmed, if you will. You're programmed by the experiences you had. I shouldn't have to go deeper into that. You should understand that. You, you sit there and you like somebody. Then someone walks up to you and says, yeah, well, you better go talk to who they went dated with last time. Wait to hear what they have to say. All of a sudden, you're not so open next time you see the person. You're the sum of your learned experiences. Everything that comes in is an experience to you, and it changes what your psyche thinks, what, what it thinks it likes, what it thinks it wants. It can change on a dime, can't it? You date somebody, you think they're really wonderful, this is really great, and it turns out someone tells you they're a serial killer. Well, that changes instantaneously. So this thing about what I want is programmed. It is not something, you did not decide what you want. Hey, I don't care how big you are in business, how big your ego is, and that. you did not decide what you want. It was decided for you. Your parents' influence, the preacher's influence, the rabbi's influence, the first girlfriend influence, the first divorce influence, all of these things left impressions on you, and you are then reacting to that, and that's how you decided what you want. So there's two sides to the equation. One is you can work on trying to make the outside be what is that's not going to do it. You can meditate, you can do different things to reach a state inside yourself, which is nicer, but what happens when you come out? What happens when you deal with the world? What happens when you deal with business? What happens when you deal with relationships? People have not learned how to be unconditionally happy. They're conditionally happy, and they honestly believe that getting what they want is the way to be happy. So let's just jump real quickly, because you guys are very advanced, you wouldn't be at the seminar, and say, okay, wouldn't I be happier if I liked everything? <laughs> what if my preference, I, I came up with one preference, all right? That is, I prefer that it be the way it is. What if you liked all the weather, instead of just liking certain climates and certain humidities? No matter what the weather is, it's cold, I love the cold, I love to bundle up. It's hot, I love the heat, oh my God, I feel so open. Then you would not be making yourself unhappy because of the different situations that are happening in your life. You're the one who decided what the weather needed to be which has nothing to do with what the weather is going to be. The weather is based on meteorology, not based upon your thought processes or your preferences. So you finally get to the point where you realize there's work to do outside, which is attempting to get the world to match what I want, but there's work to do inside, which is questioning how I came up with what I want. And is that really what I want? That's why I started the discussion by saying, what you really want is to be happy. So why did you qualify that by saying I can only be happy if I get what I want? 
I can only be feel love, tremendous love, if the person I'm with is treating me the way I want and being the way I want and thinking the way I want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> because that's not true. That's called conditional love. There is unconditional love, which is, exists inside of every single one of us. There's unconditional happiness, unconditional joy. And to jump again very quickly with you guys is what is stopping me from feeling unconditional joy, unconditional love, and unconditional happiness? And the answer is you. You have built within your psyche, within your mind, the concept that I can only be happy if certain things happen. I can only feel love in, in certain circumstances. Why did you do that? Why, do, why, why not be more open? It's sort of like when you, when you decide that you want something, you have limited what can make you happy to that thing versus all the other things that could possibly happen won't make you happy. So you're just limiting yourself to a tiny little world, a tiny slice that things have to be exactly the way you want in order for you to do what? Open, that's the key. In order for me to be open, you use that word. You meet somebody, you say, oh, I felt so open with him and her or her. I'm so open about this new job. What, what do you think? You all talk about passion. What is passion? That you're open to the experience you're having. Then you feel all this joy. You feel all this passion well up inside of you. Why can't you feel that all the time? Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to wake up in the morning and here's your attitude. I'm back. Well, I wonder what's going to happen today. This will be a lot of fun. I don't care. It's just going to be fun. I'm going to do my best at whatever's happening. And I'm going to interact with everybody and meet different people. You can do that. But if you limit yourself to what your preferences are, then you can only be happy with the things that match your preferences. So spirituality is not about renunciation of the outside world. Spirituality is about working on yourself to be more open. The more open you are, the more joy you feel. If you become completely open, unconditionally open, like the Dalai Lama, these really great beings, they're just, they just say it's about being happy. And so despite these terrible things that happen in the world, I'm going to start off by being open and not closing myself. Then I will do what I can to help. It's not that you don't come into the world. If you're filled with joy and filled with love, you're a blessing on this planet. You're a rarity. Whoever you meet is lifted. You can be that all the time, except that you have defined yourself as someone who's limited to being happy if only certain things happen. So let's take a moment and talk about where you came up with your preferences. Talk about the psyche. You sit in there and you watch an ego. You watch a psyche. Freud talked about id, ego, and superego. Id being the desires and drives of the body, superego being what, what your society programmed you with, and the ego being the attempt to build a self-concept that can be okay between those things. You sit in there as a conscious being, <clears throat> watching that all the time. That's what witness consciousness is. All right, that's what objective observation is. You have a, a state of being which is consciousness and it is aware of what is going on inside your mind, it is aware of what's going on inside your heart. If you start having trouble with your heart, I would tell everybody, don't come to me for therapy, you don't want to. If you came to me and said, my heart's killing me, my boyfriend or girlfriend left me and I have all this pain in my heart, I know what I'm gonna to say to you. How do you know? How do you know that your heart hurts? And eventually you yell at me because I'm in here. I'm in here experiencing it and I'll pronoun to you. Because you who's in there experiencing it are not in pain. You're looking at and experience something that's in pain. So you are the objective observer, the consciousness, and you're watching this preference system that is limiting your ability to be happy. And it says all the time, I don't like that. I'd rather have this. It's not the way I want it to be. It just complains and judges all the time because it's been programmed with a preference system. How did that happen? I talked about that. Let's talk about how it really happens. You have experiences in your life that are not comfortable. Throughout your life, you've had various experiences that are anywhere from slightly uncomfortable to traumatic. You don't like experiencing that. That's not a nice experience. So what you do inside is you push the experience away. The experience happened, the outside actually happened. You can't stop that, but you don't have to let it come all the way into you. You don't have to experience it fully. You have hands inside and you can push away these experiences once they come inside of you. You push away the energy of the experience 
And that's called suppression. Repression or suppression, I call it just resistance. You resist the events. Do you know where they go? Again, you're advanced. I don't have to go into great detail. The ener- well, Those impressions that came into you, and now they're in there, and you push them away because you don't experience them, are literally going into the channel where your Shakti comes from. They're going into the upward, where the, all that beautiful upward flow of energy you have inside of you, you're blocking it with those things you push inside. Every one of them. If you sit there and say, I don't like the weather, you're not happy. If you sit there and say, I don't like what you did, you're not happy. Every single experience you have that you can't handle, that you resist, is pushed down on top of this beautiful energy flow that you have inside of you. That's the deepest thing I have to say to you, right? Every single thing you resist. The car in front of you is driving slower than you want. It's hotter than you want it to be. Somebody said something, at least you think they did, that you might not like. Every single one of those, you are resisting the experience that you're having, and that resistance builds up inside of you. And that resistance is what blocks your energy. And that's the bottom line of, of learning. You can do all the techniques you want, when it's said and done, as long as you are doing that, you will never reach unconditional happiness. Why? Because you said so. <laughs> you said, I don't want this to have happened. And that becomes a really interesting discussion. I purposely, purposely stuck in the word to have happened. It already did happen, but I don't want it to have happened. You tell me how that works out. Reality wins. It actually took place. Like we're talking about things you did in your, that happened in your past that you pushed away, you resisted. And when you resisted them, they built up and they blocked your energy. You can't change your past. No one has ever changed their past. You need a time machine to go back. All you can do is deal with how you dealt with your past. And right now, you keep pushing it back down. If you had a bad experience, you're not doing well, somebody, something reminds you of the bad experience, you get uncomfortable. And so you push that back down. I can't sit there and look in your eyes up close, but do you understand you do it all the time? That basically something reminds you of what somebody said that bothered you 10 years ago. Yeah, you have an ex-husband, an ex-wife, and somebody says, oh, let's go to the party. And you still think, well, I hope George is in there. And if somebody calls out at the party, George, where's George? It doesn't mean it's your George, but I promise you, your heart jumps because you stored this stuff inside of you. As long as you're storing problems inside of you, you're going to have problems inside of you. If you store inside of you that made you uncomfortable, you're going to be uncomfortable. I don't know. We're very intelligent people. I don't know why we don't understand that. People collect all kinds of things. They collect coins, they collect stamps, they collect teapots from all over the world. You decided that it would be wise to collect bad experiences. And that is what's in there. And that is the only reason you don't feel ecstasy all the time. Let's just make sure you got your attention, right? You are an ecstatic being. There's total love and joy welling through you all the time, period, all the time. And the only reason you don't feel it is because you've stored problems inside of you. And so now you need to try to get situations outside to be comfortable to you, even though you have this stored stuff inside of you. When I did the interview with Oprah with the new book, Living Untethered, she said her favorite line in the book is, the moment in front of you is not bothering you. You are bothering yourself about the moment in front of you. Oh, true or not, <laughs> okay? The weather's not bothering you. You're bothering yourself about the weather. The driver in front of you is not bothering you. You're bothering yourself about the driver in front of you. Every single thing, it, com- it comes in. You don't have to bother yourself about it. You can accept it. You can let it pass through and then deal with it. Nobody's saying you don't deal with life, but you don't deal with it as a way of making yourself okay. You don't deal with it as a way of manipulating it so that when it comes in, it doesn't bother me. That's very. That's just about you. That's selfish. Okay, and that's how we live our lives. And that's why we have to get the world the way we want it to be, to be happy. Because we stored too much stuff in here. And if the world is a diff- different than the way we want it, we get upset, we get disturbed. And we think about the future, right? What's the future hold? Well, if it holds what we don't want, you get concerned and you worry about it. But the main thing I like to point out, because you're very intelligent people, is the thing about the past. Have any of you stored bad experiences you had in the past inside of you? Do you notice that they come back up in your dreams when you're when somebody talks to you? It, sti- it stimulates this stuff, and the next thing you know, you're uncomfortable. About what? About your past. Well, why would we keep that inside of us? We can't change it. 
So this is what you start to understand true spirituality is. You just look at it and you say, what is the benefit of having stored stuff from 20 years ago that's still inside of me? And the answer is none. There's no benefit at all. The only reason it's in there is that I can't handle it. I couldn't handle it when it happened. I can't handle it now. And you start building this collection of what we call some scars, impressions, blockages, that you now have to live your life in a way that doesn't hit those. And you, you're basically, that's, that's how we live our lives, right? We try to make it so that situations don't bother us. Well, if you deal with your past properly, you look at it and you say, I don't want you stored in there. I, I thought I got divorced 20 years ago, but I'm still having the arguments inside my head. It does not have to be that way. There's nothing, nothing. Don't let them convince you of that. There's no super glue in there. There's no fly paper. Nothing has to stay in there. The only reason it's staying in there is because you're using your will to push it away. If you get to understand that that is what's stealing your happiness, and that's to the core, that's why you don't feel ecstasy all the time. Why you're not to the highest state that's possible is because you've stored this stuff inside and you use your inner will, <clears throat> excuse me, to keep pushing it away. Why not take the attitude, I don't want it in there. I don't want anything in there. That's what be here now means. <clears throat> it means I reached a state that when I walk into the present moment, it's allowed to come into me and not hit stuff. I'm allowed to enjoy, let's die diverse for a second. Let's say it's hot out. Nowadays, we have a lot of hot days, all right? And you complain about it. It's so hot, I can't handle this heat. It was so, I was 98 degrees, okay? What I've learned to do is I'll look at Mickey and I'll say, okay, why is it hot? Instead of complaining, why is it hot? And he looks at me and says, well, because this, this is the sun out there and the sun is hot. And then you start using your intellect. It's called Gyana Yoga. You start using the higher intellect of your mind that says, how far away is the sun? That's 93 million miles away. That's a long way away to sit there and be complaining about the heat. I live in Florida, so Miami is 360 miles away from us. And I ask everybody, what if all of Miami caught fire? Would you feel it here? The answer is you wouldn't feel a single thing. That thing's 93 million miles away and you're complaining about the heat. You should be in awe. <laughs> you're sitting there, that's kind of neat that it's that far away and I still feel all this heat, okay? And by the way, if it makes your face red, you didn't get sunburned, you got starburn. And you start looking at things a different way. Wouldn't it be fun? Look, you all like stars. Do you realize you're circling around a star that's hot enough to where you feel its presence? So you have the right to do things inside yourself besides complaining besides pushing away the experiences because they don't match your preferences. And you'll find that if you do that, all of a sudden, it's fun. And now when it gets hot, you think about a star floating out there in outer space. And, and, and that's one star, there's 300 billion in your galaxy. And all of a sudden it starts raising you. The sun can be like a mantra because it's hot. It reminds you to bring up the most spiritual part of your being. You can do it anytime you want. If you're driving behind a driver, who's driving 10 miles an hour below the speed limit, you're in a rush. You know, you can't pass, let's say, there you are. What do you do? Instead of complaining, you know, I don't know, Mickey's been known to talk to the driver. I don't think they listen. I don't think they hear a word I say, all right? Why not sit there and say, okay, life has now presented me with a situation. I have no control. I have to relax. I have to relax. I'll do a mantra. I'll, I'll use this time instead of bothering myself about it. I'll use this time to raise myself. So this is what spirituality is. It is every moment of your life realizing we've made a mess out of this thing. We've complained about everything because it doesn't match what we want. And what we want is based upon the fact that we had past experience that bothered us and we don't want them to happen again. And so now we've come up with this entire value system and, and preference system that is destroying our life. So you get to the point where you start to do some work. And the work I want to talk about to start with is your past, because that's a real problem. If you have had bad experience in the past, and you all have, and you've stored them inside of you, then what you did is say, I'm going to store inside of me everything that bothered me. Then you're going to be bothered. Why people sit there and say, why am I bothered so much? What did Buddha say? Buddha said, first noble truth, all of life is suffering. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about that you're making yourself suffer by storing all these bad experiences inside, and now you're afraid they'll happen again. 
when you haven't had an experience yet, you're what we call beginner's mind. You can just experience things, you're open. You should be that way about everything. It shouldn't be that you've collected these experiences inside from the past and you decided, I don't want it. I, I want to keep them away from it. I don't experience them. I can't handle them. And now I have a whole list of things that can't happen in my daily life because they're going to remind me of the things that happened before. Do you all understand that? That's a non-starter. You can't be happy if you do that. I don't care what psychiatry teaches you, right? That, oh, you, you poor little thing. You've got this stuff stored in there. Anybody would have that. No, you're higher than that. You, you are the consciousness. You have the right to learn how to let that stuff go. And that becomes the essence of the highest spiritual teaching and the highest spiritual path. It's not about asanas, it's not about gurus, it's not about mantras, it's not about that. It's about, are you willing to work on yourself to let go of this garbage that you stored inside? You're gonna find out that if you do, the more you let go of, it's not even an all or nothing situation. The more you, if you, if you can handle the, the heat, the way I just said, talk to yourself about how exciting it is that it reminds me that I'm sitting on a little planet spinning in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> I, I can't help it. I tell everybody, did you know that 1.3 million Earths fit inside the sun? How many of you knew that? 1.3 million Earths fit inside the sun. How small is this little dinky thing that <laughs> you're spinning around and you're complaining about everything? The reason you complain is because you stored all these blockages inside, all these bad experiences. So now when the world comes in, it has to pass through your psyche, it has to pass through that. And then it looks like there's trouble, or there's gonna be trouble, I'm scared, I worry, I, everything has to be the way I want. If you work with yourself, you start, what I teach from the book talks about that. If I were to tell you right now, it doesn't make any sense for your past to bother you. It's not happening anymore. Do you understand that? I understand if something bad is happening, we can deal with that later, that's bigger but your past is not happening anymore. If your past still bothers you, there's something drastically wrong with that. You shouldn't be bothered by things that aren't happening. Fair enough. But if I tell you, let it go, you, you don't know how to. No one ever taught you to. They actually reinforce that you have the right to stay upset for long periods of time because something happened to you. In the true spirit, spiritual state, great yogis, great, great beings sit there and say, no, if something happens and it's not happening anymore, I'm gonna let it go. I don't wanna store it inside of me. I wanna bring a pure being, clear being, an open being into the moments that I'm experiencing. I can't do that now because I've stored all this stuff. So the principle becomes letting go. Well, how do you let go? Because right now, if I said to you, it's easy, now I'm done, just let go. Let go of your past, let go of everything. The current moment that's happening to you, don't store any more stuff, okay? Just when it comes in, accept it, pass it, Pass it through, don't resist it. Then you can deal with, you can try to raise the world. Okay, you should. Once you're clear, you come out here, you try to help, you do everything you can to help, but not because you couldn't handle what happened, right? Then you're just helping yourself. If you couldn't handle what took place, then the reason you're doing outside is to try and make yourself feel more comfortable. If you let go of the disturbing circumstances as they happen, you process them, you let them pass through, then when you face the world, you're a giver instead of a taker. So this, this is the essence of spirituality. So how do you do this? Well, if I say to you, let go of all the bad things that happened in your past, don't let them be in there anymore, that's a joke because we don't know how to do it. We weren't taught how to do it. We don't know how to do it. What we do is open up blogs where we can get other people that have the same bad experiences we do and see who had the worst one, okay? You're supposed to laugh. <laughs> so, so we were just reinforcing our right to be disturbed. Do you understand that? That's what we do as a society, as a world. We reinforce our right to be disturbed and then we wonder why we're disturbed. So in, in Living Untethered, I don't start with letting go of your past. I don't start with being able to handle bad situations that happen. I start with, in the current moment, there are things that happen, I call them low hanging fruit. There are current things that happen that they, sh they don't need to bother you. The heat doesn't need to bother you. The weather does not need to bother you. You're bothering yourself about the weather. And the cost benefit analysis on that is 100% cost, zero benefit. Am I communicating? You're a business people, right? Would you make, would you invest in something that had 100% cost and zero benefit? You're being bothered by the weather is 100% cost, zero benefit. Then why are we doing it? 
Most of you are evolved enough to where you don't eat food that makes you sick, right? You try to have a reasonable diet, right? Would you go there if something made you sick, just keep eating it? Well, why do we keep being bothered by the weather when there's no benefit to it? So the question becomes, take a few of these situations every day that you're bothering yourself again, repeating what I said, the moment in front of you is not bothering you, you're bothering yourself about the moment in front of you. The weather is not bothering you, you're bothering yourself about the weather by complaining about it. Believe it or not, it is essential that you learn to work with that. That's, to me, that's more essential than your meditation time. That's more essential than these supposedly spiritual things. You go meditate, go to a good state, then come down and, and complain. <laughs> right? Come down and be bothered by the driver in front of you, be bothered by the weather, be bothered by what somebody said. It doesn't work. You have to sit there and say, I understand that I'm the only one in here. It's a single occupancy apartment. I'm the only one living in here. The way it is in here is under my control. Outside's not under your control, but inside is 100% under your control. You're the one who decides when to resist. You're the one who decides when to grab. You're the one who decides when to complain. It's yours. You decided to be happy when you got what you wanted, but you decided what you wanted. It's that I, I, you're living in your own house and it's a mess and you don't understand that you made the mess. So you have the right to come inside and do the work every moment of every day. That to me is the real spiritual work. It's every moment, it's while you're driving, while you're picking up the kids from soccer, while you're having a discussion with, your, with, with a friend or with your spouse, and just work every moment of everything. You are in there. Are you willing to do the work on yourself that says, if I don't resist or suppress the moments that are happening now, I won't have to carry them with me for the rest of my life. And I, I, I know you're intelligent enough to understand you do carry them for the rest of your life. Somebody says, well, you call out to somebody, hey, Sally, how you doing? She doesn't respond, she's a friend of yours, right? You're gonna be weird next time you see her. Do you understand that? It carries inside of you. It doesn't need to do that. It's because you resisted it that it stayed inside. So you finally wake up and you realize, I got some work to do, all right? I got some cleaning up to do inside myself. And it's way bigger than just some spiritual practices. It's about being walking into life and realizing Life is gonna unfold in front of me, that's what it does, okay? I can't control everything. Life's gonna unfold in front of me. Can I learn to handle the moments that are unfolding in front of me? Or do I have to keep fighting with them or resisting them to make them be what I want? So the low-hanging fruit is defined as following. If you let it go, there's nothing else to do. Now, if your house burns down, or the hurricanes or hurricane things, that's not low-hanging fruit. Right? You're disturbed. If you let go of the disturbance, you still need to deal with the disaster that took place outside. So nobody's saying it's all about renunciation or letting go and you don't do anything. No, that's ridiculous. You interact with the world, but not because you're not okay. You, in, you first be sure you're okay, that you can handle things, all right, as they take place. We started, I don't wanna go to the hurricane yet, but you started with low-hanging fruit. I define low-hanging fruit as saying, if you let it go inside, there's nothing else to do. If you can handle the weather, there's nothing else to do. You're liberated, you're free. But if you can't handle the weather, that's something you did and it's gonna bother you and you'll tell other people about it and you'll complain about it. So this key to understand that it's not about getting what you want. It's about letting go of the disturbances you're creating inside yourself that makes it so you have to have things be a certain way to be okay because you shouldn't need to have things be a certain way to be okay. So you start with the weather, you start with the driver in front of you, you start with, you know, go to lunch, the serving isn't the size I want, okay? Or it's, it's not hot enough, or the, you know, the waiter wasn't nice. Go on, ruin your lunch. That's what you're doing. Come on, look at me. <laughs> you're just ruining all these moments of your life, and then you're wondering why life is so tough. All right, you don't need to do that. You have the right to sit inside and say, the more open I am to the unfolding of life, the happier I'm gonna be. And I'm gonna do that. I'm just gonna work with myself. I'm gonna change my attitude about all the things that are happening. And you could do positive thinking. That's a nice positive thing to do. I like to talk about the sun. You know, there's a star and it's, it's heating me, so I like that. You can talk about the driver in front of you. You can do many different things or what I have found, you can relax. 
I have found that to be the highest technique there is, despite all the different things that are being taught. If something happens outside and it comes into me and I feel resistance, and you know what I'm talking about, I feel weird, it starts to get uncomfortable inside, relax, just relax, all right? And people say to me, but, 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 but the disturbance won't relax. Of course the disturbance won't relax. Disturbance doesn't know how not to be disturbed, it is by definition disturbance. You who experiences it, the self, the Atman, the consciousness, the witness, you can relax from that point inside of you, behind. It's always behind. People ask me, why do I point back here? Because you're back here looking down, looking down at your psyche, looking down at your body, looking out of the mirror. The consciousness is back here. It's behind all of that. And the consciousness does not have a single problem. The light doesn't care what it's shining on. Do you understand that? Okay, you can shine on something ugly, something beautiful, something old, something young, something broken, something new. It doesn't matter. The light is just light. Consciousness is aware of good things, bad things, happy things, sad things. It's just awareness of being. And so there from that place where you're experiencing the complaining, experiencing the disturbance that got created by something for no reason, it just didn't match what you wanted. So you let disturbance happen inside. Relaxing is the highest technique you can do. Not just relaxing through an asana, not just relaxing through meditation. Relaxing, the moment the energy gets weird inside, relax. Now what does that mean? Why does the energy get weird inside? Because it hits your blockages. I go into this in great detail in Living Untethered, all right? These blockages are real. They're like taking a rock and putting in a stream, a clean flowing stream, Put one rock in it, what happens? Eddies, currents, sprays, those are what you're experiencing. These blockages you push down into your energy flow are causing all these emotions and all these disturbances that you're feeling all the time. And you know what I mean. Somebody says something you don't like, what do you feel inside? <laughs> it just gets all weird inside. That's because you have these stored blockages, the energy comes up and it hits them, and what you do, instead of dealing with the blockages, you try to make sure that nobody ever says it again. You try to make sure that everybody is the way you need them to be. Business unfolds the way you need it to. The paper, newspaper is the way you want it to be, et cetera, et cetera. So if it isn't, it creates disturbance. So that, that's a point I wanted to make. What are these disturbances inside? They are the Shakti. If you don't mind, I will call that energy Shakti. That's a yogic term. They are the Shakti hitting the blockages which in yoga we call some scars. They're the Shakti coming up, hitting the blockages. That's what causes all your emotions. Anger is energy coming up, it starts to come up and it gets blocked and it wants to shoot out, okay? All of these emotions, all of these disturbances are caused by the blockages. If the blockages are removed, you're gonna find out who you are. You're gonna find out that there's this river of bliss of ecstasy pouring inside of you. It comes out the top of your head. It pours out your third eye. Literally, you feel it pouring out of your hands. That's what healers do when they heal. But there's the highest thing to do is relax behind it because the Shakti, the energy, will push the blockages out of the way. That's what she's doing. That's her job. The energy is supposed to come up. It's supposed to feed you. That's what the Bible means. And when I'm talking, I hear it. I don't know why, <laughs> but I hear Christ talking. He said, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that leaveth the mouth of God. That's what we're talking about. You're not living off of what's coming in from outside. There's this beautiful energy that flows inside. Christians call it spirit. Yogis call it Shakti. And East, they call it Chi, whatever. It's all the same stuff. There's this beautiful energy inside of you. When you're experiencing that energy, you, you feel joy, you feel happiness. When you're not, you get depressed or you get disturbed because the energy is hitting and the energy is shooting out by being disturbed by the blockages. Like, God, I hope you get this, <laughs> all right? That's the essence of understanding. They don't teach us this. That's the essence of understanding what's going on inside of you, which is what your life's about. If you push that stuff down there, it is blocking your energy flow. Now, if you go outside to try and compensate for that, by relationships and this and finance and cars and all kinds of things, which are wonderful. It's not, you're not renouncing anything. A spiritual, a real spirituality does not renounce anything. Why? Because they can handle everything. How would they choose what to renounce? <laughs> but what renunciation is about is I can't handle it, so I better renounce it. 
So it's not bothering me, all right? That's not openness. So you get to the point where you understand these blockages are serious. And there's only one reason the blockages are in there. You push them in there and you're keeping them in there. And that's like one of the eighties with like this whole thing about empowerment, right? You are completely empowered. Your state of being is not dependent upon your spouse or your children, or your finances or your business or the world. You're in there. It's yours. You can have beauty inside, beautiful. And then and I keep qualifying. Then of course you come out and help. It's not that you just go to sit, sit off in a mountain somewhere. All right. You take the beauty that you found inside yourself and you express it. You share, you, you give. It's a beautiful thing. So don't, don't think that this is about just yourself and being selfish and trying to feel good. It's about raising everything around you. When you raise yourself, you raise everything. So it's all about the blockages. It's first of all, it's all about Shakti. It's all about Shakti. It's all about that love. What is Shakti? What is love? Shakti, the energy rising up to the fourth chakra and pouring out the fourth chakra. That's what you would call love. And the tuning with somebody who you like. <laughs> if, if, if they talk the way you want, dress the way you want, act the way you want, et cetera, et cetera, you open and then the energy can come up and you feel this experience of love. Well, what if you're not closed? What if you never close? That is all love. You know what it should take for you to feel love? Anytime you want. Just wave your hand in front of your heart and bliss pours through your heart all the time, anytime you want. That is what it means to reach a state of happiness, a state of pure, unconditional happiness. It's inside of you, it's available to you, anything. I once was with a very high evolved, evolved yogi, and I was, it was years and years ago, and I was driving him somewhere, and I felt the, he had a lot of energy. I felt the energy of the car just get tired, get a little weird, and it, it wasn't me. And I'm telling you, I watched him, he did this. It, the whole energy in the entire car just almost blew me out, all right? Just two breaths, that's all it took to completely change the energy flow. You have that ability. You're the most beautiful thing that ever walked the face of the earth. You're whole, you're complete. There's nothing wrong with you, except that you have blocked yourself. And because you're blocked, you feel protective and defensive, etc. because you don't want things hitting your blockages. So the answer is one, you want Shakti. If anybody asks, what do you really want? If God comes down and says, what do you want? Say Shakti. <laughs> I want an infinite flow of Shakti pouring through me all the time. Now I'll come out and I'll work with the rest of the world. Okay, well, why don't you have that? Because I, I blocked it. Nobody else did it. Yes, somebody else did something when you were 10 or 15 or 20, whatever it was, that disturbed you. I'm not saying nobody did anything, but you're the one that couldn't handle it. You're the one that blocked it inside of you for the rest of your life. You have to own that as something you did. And I'm glad, I'm glad you understand. I'm glad you did it because you don't have to keep it in there, right? It keeps coming back up. You understand that, doesn't it? Something reminds you of it, somebody says something, you see a poster, right? You hear a name and this, the past stuff comes up. You have to reach a state where you've learned to let it go. That's what it's all about. It's all about letting go, not letting go of life, letting go of the stuff you stored inside that you couldn't handle when life unfolded in front of you. And so basically, what do you do? I told you, the highest state is to relax, but we'll, we'll work with some high, uh, other things. Highest state is the moment you start feeling disturbance, you should get excited. You should say, oh boy, it's time to grow. It's time to let go of more of this stuff that I stored inside myself and committed my life to letting it run my life. It runs your life because you're afraid of it or, or you store something really nice. You want it to happen again. Those impressions run your life. You, they don't have to, all right? But right now, if I sit there and say, let go of everything you store from the past and accept everything that's happening right now, you should laugh at me <laughs> because you don't know how to do it. Why? You were never taught how to do it. That's why you're here. You're here to learn. Of course you don't know how to do it. Of course you don't know how to let go of all these impressions you stored inside yourself over the course of your life. Then when they come back up, they're disturbing and they're hard to deal with. And the tendency is to protect yourself from them and push them back down. You never learned, nobody taught you. If you go go on the, go to tennis, go, go play tennis against Borg or McEnroe for the first time you pick up a racket, that's a joke. It's the same thing with this inner work. You have to learn to do it. 
just like playing a piano. You don't start with Beethoven or Mozart. You start with these things called the scales. And that's what I call low hanging fruit. By being able to handle the weather instead of complaining about it, by being able to handle the driver in front of you instead of complaining about it, working with yourself, using those opportunities to learn to relax and release. So it's R and R. That's a new type of R and R, right? You relax and release. The energy comes up, it hits something, and you let it go. And you're going to find out that all of a sudden the heat is fun, and the driver in front of you is fun because you let go. There's no cost to doing that. All that happened is you're a happier person right then, right there. But people don't think it matters. <laughs> they don't think it matters that they complain about everything. Of course it matters. You're building a psyche that is complaining and therefore it gets disturbed by things. You don't have to do that. You have the right to be in there and say, okay, today I'm gonna to start working on myself. Instead of working on everybody else to be the way I want, I'm gonna work on myself so that I'm letting go of these disturbances that build up inside. When you learn how to do it with the low hanging fruit, with the weather, with the car in front of you, with what I think she said something I might not like. Now there's a real nice thought. I think she says something I might not like. Well, then why are you disturbing yourself about it? Why don't you decide I think she says something I like? <laughs> why would you make your life so miserable by allowing your mind to think like that? And so basically you start letting go. And what's going to happen is, and people write me all the time, every one of you can do this and it's a major change in your life, what happens is you'll start finding it's easier and easier to let go of these little things. They just come up, you relax and release, and then you deal with the moment in front of you. Because they, you didn't need to be disturbed by them. And now what's gonna happen is somebody's gonna come up and say something to you that is not low hanging fruit. You know, your boss calls you in. So I wanna have a talk with you about some of your work. Okay, and you start feeling, well, that's disturbing. But because you work with the low hanging fruit, you understand it does no good to get all neurotic about the fact that you're gonna to go to a meeting with your boss tomorrow. You'll be in the worst shape you could possibly be in if you worry about it the whole time. So all of a sudden, you now have an ability that very few people have to say, okay, I'll deal with it tomorrow. I mean, tomorrow I'll do my best. If I have to prepare, I'm not saying I won't prepare, right? But I'm not gonna make myself get all disturbed inside or allow myself to get all disturbed inside because I'm afraid or desires, whatever it is. So I relax through it, but now I can, because I learn, just like you learn to play tennis better, and you'll be better at it. Every, take the piano. If you play scales, you can play Twinkle Twinkle. Play Twinkle Twinkle, you can start to play some music. You know that, it's called learning. Have you bothered to learn how to do this inside yourself, not to store these things inside? And then what will happen? Something from the past will come up that always bothered you. And you're going to find out it doesn't bother you as much because you're capable. You've learned how to handle these things. And so you relax through that. And that's when it starts to get really nice. You relax through some of the bigger things that you've carried throughout your life that were running your life by avoiding them. And all of a sudden, and again, don't take my word for it. I want you to experience it. This that started as disturbance when it was coming up and I looked at it, there was some, something in the past. And usually I push it back down. I have to take time to push it back down this time because I learned how to be back here and relax and let it go through, it starts to go through. And the started as disturbance comes up as ecstasy, as joy. It's called the transmutation of energy. It's the essence of yoga. It's the essence of spirituality. You don't, you don't express the energy. You don't suppress the energy. It transmutes by letting go of the blockages that it's pushing up. If you can keep letting it go, those blockages will go, they will go. You know, it's, it's amazing. You know, your body has a thing called the immune system. What does that mean? You don't have to do anything for small bacteria and small little things to get, get in there. It just, white blood cells come up, they take care of it, they fight it off. It's happening all the time, isn't it? Your, ener your energy body, your Shakti body, your energy body is way more intelligent than your physical body. It wants to cleanse. Your heart does not want these blockages and these fears and insecurities that keep you from being able to feel love. And it will push them out, but you push them back down. You call that a bad experience, okay? If something happens and disturbs me, if this, this shook me up because it reminded me of something from the past. You should be excited about that. 
You change your whole attitude of what's going on. What's going on is you are being given the opportunity to release what's blocking your whole life, blocking your happiness. So it's not about going out there to get something that matches so you can feel happy. It's about letting go of what's blocking your happiness inside. Most of you have heard of somebody called Rumi, a beautiful, beautiful, uh, what was it? Fifth century Persian poet, whatever he was, all right? This is what he said about love. It is not for you to seek love. It is but for you to seek and find all the obstacles you have put in her place. That's exactly what we're talking about. You're out there trying to find a lover, but you've blocked love. And so you're trying to get somebody, I've met somebody and all of a sudden they can get around my blockages. Believe me, it won't last. Your blockages are real. They're gonna come back up. The, the newness of the experience, of the relationship will wear off. And next thing you know, you're not feeling all that beautiful attraction and love like that. I mean, you all know that, but you can. You can feel it all the time if you remove the blockages. So it's not about finding things that will compensate for your blockages. It's about being willing to remove your blockages. And what you're gonna find out, it's, it's the natural state. That's what, that's what you're here for. You took birth to do this. Look at me, <laughs> right? Literally, you took birth so that when you leave, you leave with less than you came down with. That's what evolution, that's what it means, spiritual evolution. You're evolving. The question is, are you doing this every minute of your life? You're trying to earn money every minute of your life. You're trying to have relationships be good every minute of your life. You're trying to have people like you, dress, you know, trying to be accepted and, and have approval every minute of your life. But are you doing this inner work that is the purpose of your life? Because if you do that, everything else works out. Everything else falls into place. Doesn't mean, you mean I'll get what I want? This is a law of attraction? No, it's not a law of attraction. It's a law of evolution. And what happens is as you evolve and stop getting all caught up in all these personal energies, you'll notice that life unfolds. It's an amazing thing, right? There's 300 billion stars in your galaxy. They all work together. There's 25 trillion cells in your body. They all work together. A single cell made itself into a baby. It made a you know, pancreas, a pineal gland. You don't even know what these things are. That's the world you live in. You're part of that. Your life is that. All of life is that, except for the fact that we've made this mess of ourselves by blocking the experiences in life. And now we are out there fighting with life to try and make it be the way we want instead of understanding what's called the Tao. The fact that there's this balance, this flow. But when you start letting go of yourself, you'll start noticing it. You start noticing that you're much happier than you used to be. And you'll start noticing that all your relationships are better. Of course they are. You're not trying to take from people. You're fine inside yourself. How would you like to have a relationship with somebody that was filled with love all the time? No matter what, if you messed up and were late and forgot the anniversary, it's not gonna affect the love. You just know that love is unconditional. It will never change. That's a nice relationship, isn't it? Why don't you offer that to your spouse, to your significant other? That's the gift you can give to everybody. What if you were, I ran a big business, not a big business, but you know, billion dollar business. But basically, um, if, if my employees count, what, how would you like to have an employee that every time they came to work, they were so passionate, they were so excited to come to work, I couldn't wait. I woke up early, I, every single day they came in here and any job you gave them, they said, I wanna do that one, oh my God, right? How, how well would that employee do? <laughs> they'd be elevated up very, very quickly. You can be that. Instead of having to have things be the way you want, which is based on your blockages, that's how you came up with your wants, that which compensates for my disturbances. Instead, you get rid of your disturbances. You can, you let them go. And the more you let go, the higher you get. And the higher you get, the easier it is to let go. And you're on this thing called an ascent. That's the true ascent, right? Meditation helps. Yes, yoga helps, all these things help, but this is what they help. When you do meditation, you know what they say? You do your practices today, don't they? This is what you're practicing for. You're practicing for coming into life and saying, you are my teacher, you are my guru, you are bringing up what's blocked inside of me. You're, you're a mirror that's showing me every moment why I'm not enlightened, all right? And what I'm gonna do is honor and respect that whatever disturbs me inside, I'm gonna use that to let go of myself, all right? It's like, a, it's like an inner fire walk, okay? <laughs> all right? That, because when it comes back up, it, it hurts. If it was stored with pain, it's coming back with pain, you understand that, okay? It's gonna come back with everything you stored it with. 
Can you handle that? And the answer is right now from us, no, no. Okay? But you learn to. Just because you can't handle it right now doesn't mean you can't learn. And that's what I'm teaching. That's what we're talking about, is that you have this ability to, to let go of the disturbances, which makes you stronger. And then you learn to handle more disturbances and more disturbances until eventually you get to an amazing state, which is the day doesn't scare you. You can actually live in the moment and say, this is a gift. There's no other planet like the planet Earth. I understand we're, there's global warming, we're making all kinds of problems, but still, we went all, we, we sent probes out to all the planets. You understand that we landed on many of them, right? We ain't found squat. <laughs> you know, if we want to go live on Mars, it's sand, okay? Jupiter, it's gas. There's nothing. And we have these giant telescopes, the James Webb telescope and the Hubble that have looked so far. No one has seen anything at all. And nothing's really compared to the planet Earth. There's flowers, there's fish, there's, oh my God, I can't talk about it, all right? Do you understand? Earth is the Garden of Eden. Don't go look for it in Iraq. If you look at that little tiny planet spinning through outer space and nothing's going on anywhere else, and you have all this stuff to do and situations and people and animals and plants, and my God, it's a heck of a place. And what do you do? Complain because you develop these preferences that can't appreciate what you've been given. So what you do is you, let the, the, like there's a saying in the Thursday Patriarch, one of the deepest writings ever written, that says, the great way is not difficult for those who have no preferences. Well, that's very deep, very beautiful, very Buddhist, right? But then people say to me, how do I have no preferences? I have preferences. Am I supposed to suppress my preferences? No, no, not at all. You're supposed to accept that you have these preferences and then look to see why you have these preferences. Not get rid of the preferences, get rid of the cause of preferences. And I'm telling you, and again, you read the book or read your life, right? The preferences are created by your blockages. They are the, the mirror image of your blockages. If I, had, if I got divorced and had a bad relationship, when I start dating somebody else, they better not have any qualities that match <laughs> make me that remind me of my ex, right or wrong, okay? So you've developed your preferences because of your blockages. So you don't have to get, don't get rid of your preferences, get rid of your blockages, and your preferences will fall off naturally. They just shed right off like the skin of a snake. God, I hope you're hearing me. <laughs> I, I, it's like, we can have such a beautiful life, right? John Lennon, imagine all the people. If everybody did this, they wouldn't be invading other countries. They wouldn't be killing each other. They would, we wouldn't need the Ten Commandments. I always say, I think the Ten Commandments are an insult to humanity. God comes down here, he doesn't say, oh, have a beautiful life, love everybody. No, he sits there and says, don't kill each other, don't eat each other, don't steal each other's spouses, don't don't lie, don't cheat, don't, whoa. He doesn't think very highly of us, does he? But you know, he's right. Because we have these blockages, we fell from the garden. And now we have to work by the sweat of our brow to try to be okay. That's, that's a quote direct from Genesis, all right? But instead, we don't do that. We just go out there and try to work by the sweat of our brow. And it was the most powerful wins. No, you work inside to release these blockages, which you put in there and you keep them in there. Nobody can put a blockage inside of you. Nobody, you're the only one in there. First of all, do you understand that? That's a single occupancy apartment. There's nobody in there but you your consciousness. Things can happen outside that are disturbing. They can, they do, all right? But when they come in, you have the right to process them, to say, uh, the highest mantra is I can handle this. I can handle this. I can handle this. Well, if you can handle it, then you're not gonna push it away. Okay, we've handled it. Now what do I do? How do I help? How do I serve? So basically, you learn to go inside every moment inside yourself every moment of every day and ask of yourself, are there things that I'm blocked inside myself and can I let them go? They will pass in their own time. You don't have to fight with them. You don't have to go tearing them out. It's not about a struggle or a fight. That is not strength. The real strength is judo as opposed to boxing, right? Judo says if a force comes at you and you try to resist it, it could be stronger than you and you're gonna get hurt anyways. If you lean away, relax, it will pass through you. Then you can deal with it. So this is what you're doing inside. 
You're sitting inside consciously. Meditation helps do that. And as the energy gets disturbed inside, you're not trying to figure out how do I stop it. You're trying to figure out how do I let it go. And you will learn. I'm telling you, you'll learn every day. You'll learn. You go to. It's not that when you you were born, you don't want to go back up when you die with less than you came down with. Every day, you're a different person. Listen to me. You woke up in the morning with a certain amount of stuff. You went to bed with less. That's all I ask of you. If you do that over time, you will start to feel this joy. Now let's talk about what what real joy is. First, you're not complaining, you're not disturbed because you accept it. You accept it. The weather, you accept the car in front of you. It, if you can't do anything about it, accept it. Don't bother yourself about it because there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> That's what we're going to sit there and say. There's another way to find low-hanging fruit, right? The only thing you can do about it is bother yourself about it. Well, what is the purpose of that? <laughs> right? You can't change what's happening in that situation, so don't bother yourself. Release, relax, and it will train you to be able to do it with bigger things. So what happens? At some point, you let go of enough. I'm assuring you. I'm promising you. To where, from behind you, a flow of energy starts to come up. The same flow of energy you felt when you fell in love. The same energy when you got married. The same energy when you won the lottery. It's the same energy. It's all shakti. But now it's not blocked. Now it's open, and it will start to flow and feed you every second of your life. You're, you have this joy flowing inside of you all the time. The only thing that can take it away is you. If you decide, no, I don't like what you did, and I'm going to stop my joy. <laughs> That's a pretty funny thing to say, okay? And instead, you say, no, I'm never going to stop my joy. Once you start feeling this energy, really, you fall in love with it. You realize, oh my God, this is all I ever wanted in my whole life. This is what all relationships were about. This is what all money was about. This is what all success was about. This is what all uh, um, being accepted by people and being clapped <laughs> when when people see you. All right, it's because it made me feel this. But now I feel this inside naturally. It's just a natural high, and it's going on. So what happens now? Now you start to fall in love with that energy flow. Really, why would you not? It's it's what you felt when you felt love for somebody else, but now it's coming from its source. And then you start to fall back into it, and what happens is the more you feel, the more you realize I don't need anything. Doesn't mean I don't interact with it, but there are no more needs. I mean, they're physiological. Fine, you have to eat, okay, because the body lie. But by the way, you don't need that, right? You're just feeling all this joy. I'm telling you, it's overwhelming. You just feel all this joy all the time, and then you you make sure that you let things not take it away. That's your choice. You want to trade the joy because somebody what somebody did, and you say no. And so then it gets stronger and stronger. And you keep letting go more and more blockages, and at some point it becomes a torrent. It becomes this tremendous rush of holy waters. I quote the Bible again. That is what's meant by the rush of holy waters, the shakti flow. My yoga talks about the shakti flow, and it gets stronger and stronger all the time. And you'll see that the only way it stops is if you stop it. If you decide, no, I can't accept this. Okay, so keep letting go, and at some point. It starts to pull you into it. It's not a matter. And some before letting go meant letting go of the stuff that's below you. Now letting go means letting go into the flow. The flow has a source. We don't know what the source of that is. We talked about what happiness is feeling that flow. What is the source of that flow? And that becomes real spirituality. I talk about the high states that the great ones go to. You start to seek the source of this beautiful flow you feel. And it starts to pull you into it like a vacuum cleaner. It just pulls you up. It's hard to not not go with it. All right. The great masters, like Mayor Baba and others, Mayor Baba specifically said, the first time he reached the state of enlightenment of total openness, his consciousness had been a drop of water looking at himself. All of a sudden, that drop fell into the ocean. Find it. Find the drop. You'll never find it again. That's what Christ meant by my Father and I are one. That's what's meant by merger. That's the high states. Every single one of you have that going on inside of you right now. Instead, you're doing this. <laughs> Instead, you're protecting yourself and blocking the energy and complaining and thinking you have to have certain things to be a certain way to be able to be high to be able to get what you want. No, you're whole and complete within yourself. But I keep stressing that does not mean you don't interact with the world. But you don't interact with the world in order to get what you need in order to be okay. That's taking. 
You interact with the world giving. I feel, now I feel all this love, all this joy, and the world can't bother me. Now I can serve. Now I can come out and give. And I don't have to think about what to give. Give to the moment that's unfolding in front of you. Well, well, well what about my job? Give to your job. Well, what about my marriage? Give to your marriage. What about my kids? Give to your kids. <laughs> like all of a sudden you enjoy driving under soccer. Instead of sitting there thinking, God, I'd rather be doing this or doing that. I gave my life to my kids. You don't ever think like that ever because you already have everything you want. You're filled with this beautiful energy and now you can enjoy taking the kids to soccer. You can enjoy bringing them up, all right? You can, you can enjoy this tough one. You can enjoy the terrible twos when you're standing in a, in a, in a store and the kid's throwing a tantrum, right? What do you do? First, you say, okay, they're two years old. That's what terrible twos mean. And you're okay. You're not embarrassed, you're not ashamed. You don't pick them up and hit them. You don't get them what they want. You're just centered, you're clear without trying. There's no effort. It's a natural state that's happening inside of you. And then you deal with the situation. How? There's no answer to how. You're there. <laughs> you Only you will know how to deal with the situation. There's no formula for life, right? There's just this understanding that if you let go of yourself, how Christ said, die to be reborn, if you're willing to let go of yourself on a regular basis, something higher than you is inside. And that, that's God. You know, that's, that's the whole spiritual energy. That's what all spirituality is about.